have Dr. Stuart Kaufman from the University of Calgary, who will be talking on the topic of reinventing the sacred, how the paradigm of emergence offers new scientific views on the origin of life and biodiversity, economics, ethics, and spirituality. And although I've heard the talk twice, I think what with the complexity, the emergent complexity, there's something new every time I hear it, so I'm looking forward to hearing it a third time. Um, I want to tell you a bit about our speaker, Dr. Kaufman. He's a joint, he has a joint appointment at the University of Calgary in Biological Sciences and Physics and Astronomy. He's also an i chair. Graduated from Dartmouth, in, Dartmouth is it? in 1960, with, was awarded a, B, a Bachelor's of Honor, Bachelor Honors uh, at Oxford University in 63, and completed a medical degree at the University of California at San Francisco. In 96, Dr. Kaufman started Biosis, Bi, Bios Group, excuse me, a Santa Fe, New, New Mexico-based for-profit company that employs complex systems, which you'll be hearing something about, to attempt to solve business problems. Dr. Kaufman is quite well known, if you've read some of his books, which I should say are for sale, a couple of which. He's very well known for arguing that the complexity of biological systems and organisms might result as much from the self-organization and far from equilibrium dynamics as from Darwinian natural selection, which is a, a fairly contentious um, theory. His theories of emergence in complex systems are broad in their implications, including, as you'll see, economics, spirituality, biocomplexity, and even the origin of life, a uh, symposium on which was the first time I heard him speak. Um, if you're interested, there's an article by Dr. Kaufman on the EDGE's Third Culture website, which is off of the CFI Ontario calendar for tonight's event, which I urge you to read. It's a full essay, which I think prepares you for, um, I guess not this talk anymore, but uh, his book, which is coming out in May, I believe. And with that, I think I'll turn things over to our speaker, Dr. Stuart Kaufman. Thank you. Poor Justin has to hear this a third time. <laughs> but, but I'm here because of Justin, so um, tough luck. <laughs> um, I'm really very, very pleased to be here. I've given this talk, this is the fifth time, I've given it twice to physics departments entitled Reinventing the Sacred, um, and two times yesterday and today, and this is the third time to more general audiences. I, I have written a dangerous book. Um, I'm old enough that it's okay, because if I die it doesn't matter. But I did have a picture of Yahweh with a thunderbolt okay, um, the other night in bed, and I thought, the old guy was going to get me, and I thought, you know, I, I don't want to go that way. I want to put what, I, I, I'm absolutely serious about what I want to try to talk about tonight. It is a dangerous book. Think of the title, Reinventing the Sacred. The word, the word sacred, the word sacred rings in the ears of those of us like myself who do not believe in a supernatural God. I haven't ever believed in a supernatural God. Um, it, it rings to us of danger. Um, we think of our hero Galileo, condemned by the church, recanting to the church in his views that the earth orbits the sun, and he is forced to recant and says as he leaves, and I love this, e pure si muove. Do you understand? This, nevertheless, it moves. Okay. And, and you think, roughly speaking, God bless you, Galileo, taking on the church in the name of truth. We needed it, and we did. So we, we, we who are secular humanists, I've been a secular humanist, I guess, all my life, um, hear the word sacred, and the response is, roughly speaking, how dare you talk about that? That's taking us back to the dark side. It's taking us back to the Inquisition. It's taking us back to people killed in the name of God. Don't go there. And understand that. And that's what I'm saying. Um, if you so, if you write a book like um, Dawkins' book, which everybody here I'm sure has read, um, The God Delusion, what Dawkins in effect says is, those who believe in God are mindless fools who leave their brain 
in the toilet than go to church or synagogue or wherever they go. They're just being dumb. Um, so I have a couple comments about that, and I want to put it in a broad societal context, and I want to talk to you in this broad societal context, too. Three billion of us believe in the Abrahamic God, the largest number of Christians. Next is Muslims. I happen to be Jewish. There's this thin sliver. But Abraham was our guy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so was Jesus. <laughs> Muhammad was. But, but, uh, the other, the other guys were, you know, Jewish. Um, a billion of us don't believe in God. We're either agnostic or close atheist. Um, then there are then there are people who believe in Hindu gods. Then there are people in the wisdom tradition, such as Buddhism and Confucianism, and so on around the globe. What's driving me in the title that I've chosen, and what I want most seriously to engage you in tonight, is the following: uh, a global civilization of some form will emerge in the next century. Something like that. None of us knows whether it will be a homogeneous global civilization in which we all go to Tim Hortons. I've been here three years. Okay, I'm Tim Hortons. Okay, and speak English and French, because I'm in Canada. Or whether it will be persistently heterogeneous and inventive. We don't know. My own, my own view is that I'd rather see the latter than the former, because it would be so dull. And I don't like Tim Hortons coffee quite as much as I like Starbucks. Um, but, but we don't know. Something fundamental is happening around the globe that we both know and are not paying attention to as much as we should. We are retreating into our civilizations, uh, Western, Islamic, uh, Persian, Russian, <coughs> uh, Confucian, Indian, Japanese. As we retreat into these civilizations for our identities, more and more of us, and I don't mean those of us who are secular humanists, but more and more of the general population, is retreating into the dominant religion of their civilization. In turn, this is in fact leading to the reemergence of fundamentalisms around the globe. You have only to look at my country, the United States. Okay, I'm going to give you two examples, one from the United States, and the other, if there are Catholics in the room, I hope I don't offend you. Um, in the United States, do you all know the book Left Behind? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, a year ago at Christmas, I was down in Santa Fe, where I still have a home. At Walmart, children could buy, last year, a, a, a video game called Left Behind. Um, in this game, uh, ten-year-olds can play the game, and their aim is to convert you, if you happen not to be a religious fundamentalist, to accept Jesus and salvation and the rapture. Um, guess what happens, and they get points if they do, which is great in this game. Guess what happens in this game if they don't convince you? In a game for kids. Mm 